Hi there, friends. Um, it looks like I'm live, but I just am waiting for both my computer and my phone to catch up. I think there we are, still waiting on my phone. So the winner this time around was my uh, laptop. All right, I'm going to switch this over to live chat to make sure that I am seeing everyone, seeing all comments, not just certain ones. Right. Okay, it's on all devices. I can see everything. Hi there, friends, and welcome to um, our Tuesday YouTube Live. My voice is still a little uh, hoarse. Um, Heather and I spent... Um, three days in Columbus, Ohio at the Simon Says Stamp Create event where we worked uh, Megan takes for 10 hours each day. So a lot of talking in there with lots of um, Pink Fresh Studio friends and fans. So probably some of you in the chat were there and we probably met you. Um, so I'm still a little hoarse from all of that talking, but hopefully we'll get through this next hour together unscathed. We are going to do a little bit of foiling first. So I went ahead and I got my machine turned on so that would be nice and heated up for when we get going on today's card. So first and foremost, welcome everyone. Whether you have been watching our lives for a while now or you are new and just found us, found us, we're so happy that you're here. Um, once I flip the camera and start creating see as many comments come by. So um, consider this just a nice blanket welcome to one and all. Now today, the person typing behind the Pink Brush Studio name is Kinnery. Heather is not available today. So um, it is me and Kinnery today. And uh, like I mentioned, um, I may miss a lot of questions as we go, um, but Kinnery will be there and she will answer as much as she sees um, and she'll catch a lot of what I miss. So before we get going today, let's just go over our, over our usuals. We do give away a $15 gift card code at the end of every live. All you have to do is currently what you're doing now, chat in the live chat. Now, if you know the answer to someone's question, feel free to answer it. Feel free to ask questions and uh, we'll do our very best to answer you. And just chat with your fellow crafters in the live chat. This is meant to be crafty and social as well. So then also another way to gain an entry into the giveaway is underneath this video, there's a little tab, it has an arrow button and it says share next to it. If you wanna share that, there's different ways you can share. You can share directly to your Facebook page. You could share in your Instagram stories. Um, you could share if you have like an email or a direct message with crafty friends. And then finally, you can share in a Facebook crafting group as long as it's allowed. There are some that have rules against that. So make sure if it's a crafty group that you frequent that you know the rules and you're following those. Once you've done that, come back here and let us know in the comments that you shared. And that just acts as an extra entry into the gift card giveaway, which Kinnery will pick the winner at the end of the live. Finally, last thing's Last, this is not an entry into a giveaway, but something that's really helpful for us is if you could give this video a thumbs up. That helps the reach of the video both now and while on replay. And hopefully that will help us find more crafters out there, maybe people just starting and getting into crafting so that they can learn, get education on paper crafting and inspiration, and maybe become a, a new fan of Pink Press Studio as well. So I see Carissa Wiley, sorry, Carissa Wiley joined us, hey girl. Um, all right, I've gone over all of those things. We're still waiting for my hot foil system to heat up. So before, while we're waiting for that, let's chat about our new release. So our April release went live yesterday. So April um, is when Pink Fresh Studio celebrates uh, its birthday. And this year we celebrated nine years in business, which is pretty amazing. Um, so we decided that our entire release would be about celebrations this month. Um, and so it is a fantastic release. So today I am going to be using 
our new, you'll get a better look at this when I flip the camera around, but our new with love product suite. This is a fun little like floral and botanical set that's all on one. It's got these fantastic sentiments. And then of course it has the coordinating stencil and dye. And we're going to use all three today. Hi, Kathleen. So glad you're joining me today. And then uh, we will hot foil first because I really think that these brand new products pair perfectly with our previously released arch backdrop hot foil and die set. So we're gonna foil this first um, and then we will get going on the new stuff. So super fun release. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, just go to the new section of our online shop and you can see, pardon me, all of the new stuff that uh, we released for April there. And then don't forget that we also have a release blog hop going on that started yesterday. You can start that on our card blog, but we also have an Instagram hop going on today. So there are three chances to win the entire release. So three grand prize um, chances that those are on our blog hop post. They're on our intro video here on YouTube, which you should probably the last video, not in the live section, just in the regular videos. And then finally on our Instagram hot post today. So three chances to win the entire release, 20 chances to win a $25 gift card code along both the blog and Instagram hop. So really worth it to check those out. Not only will you see a ton of inspiration from our team using this new release so that you'll have a lot of inspiration for when you get your order in, but also lots of chances to win. So you definitely want to check this out. All right. Well, my hot foil system is, he is fully heated up. So we are gonna pull it over here real quick. And I am just going to lower this camera down so that you guys can see a little bit more of the hot foil process. What I have found is my overhead camera doesn't capture as much. And so I've gotten really good feedback from everyone on just doing it this way. Just gotta make sure my camera's not gonna fall off so that you can actually see more of the process. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take our arch backdrop product here and I'm going to go ahead and place it onto the hot foil system. And then I'm going to hit the timer button and you'll notice that this button right here is blinking. So what it's doing currently is the system is heating up the hot foil plate so that it will be ready to transfer the foil into our cardstock. Once this stops blinking, that's how we know it is ready to go. So while we're while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and grab my die cut machine and pull it up here. So give me just a second while I grab that. And we are going to get this all ready for when it's time to run through. So today I'm going to be using the blush foil roll. So I love the blush foil. It's kind of the equivalent of coral reef to me. It's, it matches our coral reef ink really well. And of course, yes, today I will be using coral reef ink. Now I did forget to mention earlier, everything that I'm using on my card today is linked in the video description below or in the video description. So if you're looking for products I'm using, they are all there. All right, so as you can see, the light turned off. So we're gonna go ahead and start foiling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove um, the platform from the base just because mine is hard to pull out. And so I don't want things to shift. So I'm gonna do my layer my items after I pull this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And then I'm gonna put the foil pretty side down to the hot foil plate. And then I'm gonna put my card stop. This is 100 pound hammer mill smooth white cardstock. It's our favorite for foiling. And then I'm gonna put the two shims come with the Glimmer Hot Foil system. You wanna put the frosted green one on the as the first one or the one closest to the heat because it is the one that is technically heat resistant. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to slowly run this through platinum six. So what you'll see the difference between when I, I standard foil and when I solid foil is that I only run standard foiling through the one way. I don't go back and forth. 
And I, the reason being is I don't really feel it's necessary to run it back and forth with solid foil or with standard foiling. And also I feel like you run the risk um, pillowing or kind of, you know, getting a double impression. So before we do the big reveal, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the solid plate onto my machine and I'm going to uh, wait for the platform to say it's ready again. And we are going to uh, let this heat up. Now my solid plate needs to heat up twice. So we're gonna let this go, but while we're doing that, let's go ahead and check out and see how my results. And my results were really very perfect. So we'll take a closer look at this when I flip the camera over. There is that lovely blush foil. Now I'm probably going to use the standard foiling today, but since we're here, I figured let's go ahead and get the solid foiling done as well so that it's just done and we will be ready to go. We just have to wait for, um, we just have to wait for the system to heat up which is probably going to take a couple of minutes here. So I will, I'm just gonna check and see if I have missed any questions or anything like that. I know people are so surprised that I'm using Coral Reef today. Let's see here. And all right, looks like Kennery has answered some questions about the giveaway, so that is awesome. And then, I feel like there was a question. Oh, Teresa is asking, uh, she doesn't have a Glimmer system. Do you have to have the pieces? Um, no, I am pretty, I am pretty certain, Teresa, that the Glimmer system works with the Big Shop. So um, Spellbinders is a great resource. Uh, their website is a great resource for that. I think they have all of the die cut machines listed work with the Glimmer system. So I would definitely check that out, but I am pretty certain that it works just fine with a big shot. Mary Beth, hot foiling can be a little scary, but what we always say here at Pink Press Studio is it's just paper. So break it out, try it. There's so much foil in a foil roll that even if you have to use a bit of it to troubleshoot and learn, it's a really fun process and you probably will be really addicted to it after uh, you figure it out. And we do have some really great foiling education here on our YouTube channel. So we've got two 101 classes, both, both foiling 101 and solid foiling 101. So definitely check those out. And we foil a lot in our lives as well. Not every life, but a lot of them. So um, you can always, watch our past lives and get a lot of tips and tricks there as well. So if it's something that you would like to get into, but uh, you're nervous about it, there's a lot of education out there. So um, definitely try it because it is super fun and it is super addicting. I will tell you that right now. All right. So we're just waiting. So I need my solid hot foil plate to heat up twice. That's how I get the best results. Some people don't need that. For me and my system, I do need the solid plate to, to heat up twice. That's why you saw me remove the form and start the process over again. So once this stops blinking, we'll be ready to go. Oh, hi, Brianne. So happy that you're joining us today. Okay. Okay, we are ready. So let's get this solid foiling on there. I think there was a little hair, so I don't want that to affect my foiling. All right, we're going to do the same as before. I'm going to remove the platform from the base. We are going to put the foil pretty side down onto the solid plate. And then we're going to put our cardstock down. Once again, we're going to add those shims with the frosted green one closest to the heat source. And then unlike standard foiling, I'm going to run this through my die cut machine slowly, but I'm going to do it both forwards and backwards because there's really no chance of haloing or this really shifting and getting um, an odd impression. 
I feel pretty confident doing it both ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine off because we are done foiling and I'm gonna set this off so that I'll just let the solid plate heat up over there. And let's take a look and see how the solid results are with that. And look at that, it is perfection. There's a couple of little imperfections there in the middle, but you know what? I'm gonna cut those away, so not a big deal. I, like I mentioned, I don't think I'm going to use the solid version today, but I wanted to go ahead and get it done so I would have it for a future card. And then this is already cool because I put it on my glass mat, which disperses heat really well. So I can actually go ahead and put this away. So now that we've done the foiling, just clean my desk up and I'm going to switch to my other camera. And we will get going with the rest of our cards. So I'm going to slowly put this back up to me. Hello. So I don't uh, make any sudden movements with my, make my, my camera topple. Then now we're going to switch on over to my desktop view. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's taken a minute to switch over. All right. So here we have our two. Um, lovely foil pieces. Once again, we'll show this. We used the arch backdrop hot foil plate. There's a coordinating die, which we're going to do later when we do all of our die cutting. So okay. I just, just wanted to show you guys this. We've got the lovely standard foiling and the lovely solid foiling, which sometimes <laughs> you see me in it. All right. I know, isn't that, Tara said, not a drop of foil wasted. And that was the whole purpose behind our solid hot foil plate. We didn't like the wasted foil. So really fun way to not waste it. So we're going to go ahead and set these aside. And we are going to move on to using our new With Love products. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Misty stamping platform and a A2 sized uh, panel of white cardstock. Once again, this is just hammer mill smooth white cardstock. Put those aside for now. And we are going to grab the one piece stamp set from the one piece stamp, pardon me, from the With Love stamp, stamp set. And I'm just gently removing it from the acetate backing, so I don't want to run the risk of um, uh, rub, or, you know, bending it or pulling it in any way. And I'm just going to get that lined up in the corner because I may come back and double stamp this. I haven't fully made that decision yet today, but I do want the option to double stamp. So we are going to do, I think Heather might have used the same color in last week's live. We are going to do, we're going to stamp it with a warm buff, which we like to call faux gold. Um, and I think it's just going to be a really nice, soft outline for the colors I chose today. Now, we did a make and take or a create it, take it at the event this past weekend where we stamped the image in dough and then ink blended on top of it. And it just, it turned out super lovely. Um, so this is kind of similar. I'm just going just a shade lighter with the card. I think I might stamp it just one more time and that might make it where I don't actually even need to stamp at the end, but we'll see. Make sure that didn't shift on me at all. And just do one more stamped impression here. Oh, that's much better. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to leave the stamp in my platform in case I do want to double stamp later on. So like I said, I haven't fully decided on that yet, but I have the option if I do want to. And so then we've got this lovely faux gold. I never know if my camera balance shows off the color as well as I would like Hopefully, uh, it does look fairly, fairly. 
Oh, Louise, I'm glad you love using the uh, warm buff. I think it's such a fun option. I flip-flopped back and forth between using warm buff and then uh, our lightest gray. It's uh, Misty Coast. It was slipping my brain. But I decided to go with a warmer tone versus a cooler tone this time. And so warm buff it is. So I'm just taping that down. I am going to grab a couple of my ink stands here because we're going to use a couple of different colors. I put them this way. We are going to use a couple of different colors when we are blending with our stencils. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the stencil. This is a four piece stencil set. Gotta have some stuff back here. So when all is said and done, your images will look like this when they're colored in. I'm gonna be using a little bit lighter colors than the mock-up here. But um, easy enough, we're going to use our stencils. I'm gonna use them in the exact order that they say. So our stencils are all numbered in the upper left corner and I'm gonna go from one through four. You'll notice that they do have alignment guides in each side. If I can find a glare there for you to see. Now I'm gonna omit the alignment guides this time around because I've stamped the image. So instead of using the alignment guides, I am going to just align the stencil openings to the um, the stamped image itself. I'm just gonna grab a couple pieces of washi tape. I'm getting towards the end of this roll and I find that on these smaller washi tape that when you get towards the end, they start to tear a little bit easier. So there we go. There, got it pulled out so I can grab a few more pieces if I need it. All right, so just getting those nice and aligned here. I'm gonna tape my stencil into place. Pardon me, I'm a little sniffly as well because I've got allergies going on. So kind of sound a little terrible today, but I promise it's just allergies and it's just from a lot of talking this past weekend. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little half inch brushes. And these are what I'm going to use to blend in my colors today. I am gonna blend the tape, but I'm probably gonna grab a piece of scrap cardstock here in a minute and do that. So I'm just gonna avoid it. And the great thing about these smaller brushes you, is you can avoid the areas um, pretty darn easily. Now this is a pretty big area to cover. Ballet slipper is really, really light. So as I'm blending here in the stencil, it's probably not even gonna look like I'm doing anything. But once that stencil moves away, I think you'll be able to see the color differentiation a little bit better. <laughs> oh, thank you, Barb, that's really sweet. Oh, yes, uh, Jackie, Heather, well, I. Heather made some really cute note cards, and I think Anne Fian also made some really cute note cards with this set. And these are super perfect for note cards. I'm going to use them on an A2 card today, um, but they will, I do agree that they will look really lovely with a note card set as well. All right, and then this little guy down here, I'm going to blend in with Coral Reef. So they're gonna be just a little bit different. And I'm not even sure, certain I'm going to use all of the elements on the card today. So I may be saving some of these elements for later, but I'm gonna of course stencil them all in so I have the option. And while we're here, so let's reveal, let's take a look. So we've got the first layers of our delicate little flowers in here, but I'm gonna go ahead. I've got this little, Scrap piece of cardstock that I will put it right here. This little scrap piece of cardstock that I um, cut away from the, my foiling. And I'm going to go ahead and I am just going to um, blend the little piece of tape because I do want to use that and I'm going to blend it in brief. So, but I do want to use that little tape piece for my sentiment today. So let's go ahead and get this blended. 
Um, someone is asking if you have to have a separate brush for each color. I would say that's a personal preference based on um, the space that you have, um, et cetera. So basically what I do is I have a set for all of the lighter shades of ink. And then I have a set for the other three that I use. So there's our cute little piece of tape. We're gonna just set this aside um, and we will grab it later on to use um, when we get closer to putting our card together. So no, you don't have to have a brush for every single color. Uh, like I mentioned, I typically just do um, I have a set for the very lightest shades because I don't like my lighter shades to accidentally get darkened by the, the deeper shades in each color family. And then I use brush for the other three. So all up to you. All right, we are going to move on to mint. We're gonna use mint for this entire stencil. And I actually think I need my other light one right here. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and grab or get our little bit of ink into our brush. Now I love the, flexib the flexibility and the control you have over your blending with these smaller brushes blend a little deeper at my centers and then fade them out to be a little bit lighter as you move the ink out. That's one of my favorite things about being able to use these smaller brushes. I've, and you also just, you have more, more room. You, you're not having to cover such a big area. So you can, you can do less masking because you can be a little bit more particular about the area that you're blending. They're just really fantastic for Mint is also one of my favorite greens that we offer. We are coming out with new inks in July, new colors. And we actually do have a color, I'm pretty sure, called eucalyptus, but it's not, I don't currently have it. So we are blending our eucalyptus leaf today, or eucalyptus sprig, and mint and meadow. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about how that looks. I love the gradient I was able to get in the eucalyptus sprig. I'm moving on me. Here are our beautiful little florals. They're coming right along. Okay, so next stencil, we're moving on to stencil number three. And this is flower details. So Basically with this one, you will, if you line up the details, they kind of match the stamped line in this little bouquet down here. And then that pretty much just uh, puts the rest of this one into place. But truthfully, just the main part with these is as long as you get them within those flower images and they're not ink blending outside, then you know you're safe. You just, you don't want to cut any of the coloring away. So as long as you've just verified that each one is within its floral, you're good to go. So we're going to go back to Coral Reef on this one. And we're going to use Coral Reef on both of these. So um, Coral Reef looks really beautiful over top of the lace fur. They're not in the same color family, but they do look really lovely together. Then it's going to be a little more subtle on this one because I'm just blending coral reef over the top of it. Um, so it's going to be a more subtle detail, but you'll still see it because we are layering ink on top of it. This one I'm really not worried about shading, more just about getting some color in there to get that color differentiation between the first layer and the second. Glad you guys are enjoying my pastel colors. Last last week I went pretty bold with rainbow, so kind of getting back to my 
my more normal color patterns here. All right, let's take a look and see how that turned out. So rest of my tape. And look at how fun that is. These just fun little details. And those are pretty bold right now, but as the ink um, seeps into the paper and essentially dyes the paper, because that's a property of a dye ink, that will soften and it will smooth out. And I think that it will look just absolutely lovely. I mean, I think it already does, but I really like that when you see after the ink has really softened. All right, we are on the final stencil. This is stencil number four. And these are just greenery details. Now, same with that last one. This one follows the stamping pretty well on the eucalyptus sprig. So if you do that, this other side pretty much falls right into the place, into place, pardon me. But same as the last one as well. Basically, as long as everything is within the stamped image, you are good to go because you just don't want it outside of the stamped image because you don't want to run the risk of accidentally cutting that coloring away. So we're going to move up one shade in that green family to meadow. Just oops. got to find my right brush. I'm going to make sure it's clean because I think I used a little bit of a darker green on this brush the last time. But I think I cleaned it pretty well. So we should be totally fine to dip this into some meadow. And then you'll notice I'm going to focus my blending a little deeper at the base of those details and then shade it out so that it is soft. This is the one where I am a little bit more focused on the shading. I agree, Jennifer, the stencils, these stencils do make shading so much easier. And I'm gonna try to do the same thing on the eucalyptus. Um, there's a little bit less room for that possible, that shading on the eucalyptus, but I'm going to try to make it a little deeper at the base and then lighten it out towards the leaf. If it gets a little deep here and there, I'm not too worried about it. Oh, thanks, Alyssa. We love to hear that. I will say we, we heard a lot of really wonderful compliments from all of the people that we met this past weekend, the CREATE event and you know, it's um, it's humbling and we we appreciate probably more than we can even mention all of the wonderful things that you guys have said to us about products and us. And, um, you know, we really genuinely love paper crafting and card making and scrapbooking. And we love being able to bring all of this stuff to you. And so we really are appreciate, appreciative of your, you know, your purchases and your comments and your support. Okay, this is the final reveal on our <laughs> on our stencil and look at how fun that turned out. The meadow is a bit bold right now, but as I mentioned, it will soften as the ink seeps into the paper. And I just love how this turned out with that stamping. And honestly, I'm feeling really good with how it looks now. I don't feel the need to restamp because I don't really want to make that stamped line any stronger. I like that it's soft, um, soft and subtle. So we are good on all of the stamping, stamping and stenciling. So I'm going to set the stencils aside for now. When I end the live, um, I will clean them a little bit more extensively. I just spritz them down with a couple of spritzes of rubbing alcohol and wipe them down. And then they're super clean and dry and ready to either be put away or to use again. So a little tip, if you're new to um, stencils and you want um, an easy way to clean them, that's how we do them. All right, so we have some die cutting, some trimming down to do. So let's grab all of our elements here. Oh, I need to get the tape off the back of this. So I don't accidentally try to cut through that tape. Well, thank you guys, I appreciate that. All right, oh, you know what? Before we die, before we die cut this out, I wanna stamp the sentiment directly to it. So I think we're gonna grab a Misty. I'm gonna grab a little mini Misty here. 
And originally, I was going to stamp the sentiment to this in detail black, but I think I'm changing my mind on that. I think we're going to attempt to heat emboss it in white. So we're going to use these fantastic sentiments. You know what? And we'll do this real quick. It's a little easier to see. There are all of these great little sentiments on here. Not all of them, but most of them do fit in that cute little piece of tape we ink blended. And I think I'm going to go with the congratulations sentiment there, just because I think with the colors I used and the design I'm going for, I think that this would be a really lovely wedding or engagement card, maybe even baby. So I think I'm going to use the congratulations versus birthday. There's some really great birthday sentiments on there as well. But I think that congratulations will make this a little bit more versatile for me. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. And I'm going to get this guy centered on the tape as best as I can. My hair may have to get in here because I'm going to have to look right over top. So I apologize if you see little fringes of my hair. Okay, I think that that looks good. Okay. So my only concern with heat embossing this is that it's possible this is not fully dry yet. So here's hoping that just by prepping it with powder tool really well, that it will make the embossing ink only uh, stick to the stamping. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work out. If it doesn't, I can always ink blend. I can always ink blend another uh, tape piece of tape real quick. I think we got plenty of time for that. So, all right, let's go ahead. I'm going to stamp this a couple times. I don't want to press too hard. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping the integrity of that dainty little sentiment there. All right, I feel like that's probably pretty good. And honest truth, this may not work out. This may look terrible. And if it does, we'll just do a quick redo. <laughs> but you always got to try, try to make your vision work. And then if your vision doesn't work, you can always pivot a little bit. All right, I am going to use the Wow Opaque Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder in hopes that it will stick to that really dainty sentiment. Well, all right, moment of truth here. Ooh, I think, I think it's gonna work, friends. I think it's gonna work. Tried and true. No, well, the it will know when it we heat when we heat sets here. Okay, so just gonna go ahead and set aside this misty, and then I'm gonna heat set. So once I turn this guy on. It might be loud for a second, but then mute will probably, excuse me, Zoom will likely mute me. So if it's real quiet while I am heat setting, that is the reason. Why. All right, friends, and it worked out perfectly. I love that, and I love the white on there. I think that it was, uh, I think that was a good call rather than the black. Um, I'm Rita, I, it's possible I'm totally butching your name. I'm super sorry. So this little piece of tape, I just ink blended it. It is included in the With Love stencils. So you'll see it's on that first stencil right there. Um, and then there's also a coordinating die, which we're going to use here in just a moment. So, uh, but that is where that little piece of tape is. It's part of this with love suite that I am featuring today. So, oh, and I, I do, you know what? I'm kind of seeing your little profile photo there, Rita. And like I said, it's possible I'm butchering your name. And I do remember meeting you at the event this week. So, um, how fun. I love that. It's fun kind of putting names and faces together. Okay. 
go ahead and grab out the With Love dies and also the uh, Arch Backdrop die because we're going to use both. Um, I do need to trim down the Arch the arch backdrop as well, just the outer part. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my little small trimmer. And basically I'm just, I have a metal guide in my trimmer that I'm just lining up with those just there. And that's how I know that I'm getting it as close to an A2 panel as I can. It may not be completely perfect. But you know what, I've learned to embrace that this is handmade, not Hallmark. And it's okay if there are imperfections here and there. Go ahead and finish trimming this guy down here. And then we will be ready to trim out the middle of it with the guy. Oh, I'm glad you like the white on it on it. Me. Mary, I was kind of wondering the same thing. I wasn't sure if it would show up very well because of that, the fact they're both white, but actually it worked out really well. So I'm happy about that. Like I said, I could have totally just redone it and um, done it in black if need be, but I'm really, with the softness of this entire card, I'm really happy that it did turn out. Okay. First things first, let's go ahead and let's cut out the middle of our arch backdrop. So I am just going to grab a couple pieces of this tape I used, so no need to waste them. And I'm just gonna line it up on that inner piece and then I'll tape it to the inner piece so I don't run the risk of pulling up any of my foiling. Oh, Laura, I'm so glad you love this release. And thanks for watching while you could today. Of course, the rest of it will be available on replay if you want to catch up. All right. Um, die cut machine's just a little bit off camera, so I'm going to go ahead and die cut this, and I'll be right back. All right, so there we have our little thing. If washi tape doesn't pull up any of this, I can use this as a little scrap piece of paper for something else. All right, how fun is this arch? I think that this is just gonna look lovely with the, the little floral pieces from the With Love set. So gotta love mixing a little new with a little bit previously released or a little older. Um, always a great way to freshen up product you might already have. We love showcasing stuff like that here at Pink Fresh. Because of course, we still love you know everything that we've released. So, oh Kathy, that's so nice of you. I'm glad that you love our little community. We do too. We enjoy getting to hang out with you guys um, throughout the week and all of that. Okay, so we've got the one piece die which coordinates with the florals and the botanicals. So I'm going to go ahead and get that guy lined up. I'm taking my time to line it up because we've got some of those thin little um, some thin little uh, stems in there. Okay, go ahead and get this guy taped down. And it looks like Kenry gave a little um, date. So our liquid water color that we're gonna come out with, looks like it will be here in August. So that will be exciting. And I'm assuming that's also when we will release our branded watercolor paper, which if you've done our events, we have included it in there. So uh, gotten a little sneak peek at those. And you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down. And then I can use that piece. And then we've got our, oops, I'm doing this off camera. Sorry about that. We've got our little piece of, our little tape guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and we will run these through together. You guys, I am like the hugest fan of one piece dies. I love not having to tape down a thousand different dies. 
when cutting stuff, it's so much more efficient. Oh, I feel like I got that one a little off when I taped it. So let's redo the alignment. Okay. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna run this through and I'll be right back. Deb is asking if there are different ideas on the blog and Instagram hop. Yep, they are totally different. So we don't put the same projects in the either one. So you will see brand new inspiration along each one. Look at how fun that is, you guys. Oh, I love it. I think this would have been really fun heat embossed as well. But I really wanted to try the warm buff line because I think that it is just super fun. I love that faux gold look. Okay. All right. I think these pieces of tape are pretty much spent. So I'm going to just toss them. Okay. I will set this aside. And then let's just do a little cleanup here. I think I'm done die cutting. So let's put those away. Yeah, the one piece dies are total game changers. Oops, what did that stuck on? There we go. Okay, so let me grab my little tool. So our, our dual tip embellishment tool also became available. Um, and the great thing about this, you'll notice that there's actually quite a few little chads in this die that I need to poke out. So our tool has a craft pick on one side and I'm gonna go ahead and just poke those out. And now the awesome thing about that, so I've got all those Chad pieces picked out. And one of the most awesome features about this little tool is that it has a ball tip. So if you accidentally poke your finger when you poking things out, it doesn't hurt, unlike the ones that are more sharp. So I love that little safety feature that we added. And then later on, we will use this side, but there's the wax tip jewel picker on the other side. So we've got this fun little thing. So the way that I have marked which end is what is I just put kind of a matching enamel dot on the side that has the craft pick. And as long as I put it back on the right, back on the right side, I always know which end is which. Now that's not foolproof. If you accidentally put it on the other one, well, it happens, but not a big deal. So we'll use this again in a minute when we go to put jewels. But I just wanted to show that fantastic little tool. It's not only functional, but it's beautiful. It looks lovely in your craft area. It looks really lovely in card photos and such. So we love creating tools that are functional, but also beautiful. That's kind of what our entire Studio Essentials collection is with our, you know, our stamp press tool. Um, it's lovely, also functional. And then as we get further in, our brass trays and such. So we're really enjoying putting this slow building collection together. Uh, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it as well. Okay, so let's get to assembling our card here. I have pre-folded this fun pale pink card base. And we are going to pop the... Uh, arch backdrop up on top of it like that. We will just grab some home tape here. All right. Oh no, Jerry, that's awful. I've done that so many times though, so I totally get that. Definitely will wanna grab our tool so that you won't jab your finger and draw blood anymore. It's one of the great, that's like the greatest feature about that tool. All right, that should be plenty of foam tape. That shouldn't be saggy in any of the areas. I think there's enough. It's covered with the foam. 
A. Do you guys want to know the other uh, great thing about the brass, the fact that we chose brass, and this wasn't really, I don't think this was really in our thinking when we did it, but uh, brass is not magnetic. So if you have, if you set it, any of these tools on your MISTI, um, it's not going to get grabbed by the magnets that you have in your MISTI, which I find really annoying when that happens with other tools. Um, so uh, like brass triangle tray, our brass thing, our brass tool, um, excuse me, our dual tip brass tool, uh, they will not stick to your MISTI. So I really like that feature. It's not something we were even thinking of. I don't think when we did them in brass, but um, it is a nice little added part of it. So I cut, I did end up trimming my um, backdrop just a little too short. So I will just trim the card base down a little bit. No one will ever know. No one will ever know that your card is a little shorter than standard A2. And then you don't have those peeking off. All right, so there we have our foiled backdrop. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try to figure out how I want to arrange these. I think I want them mostly in the middle. And I may or may not use all of the pieces. I'm not completely sure on that yet. Kind of tuck them in together here. So I know that I want the little sentiment kind of overlap here. Oh, this is going to be really cute, you guys. All right, sorry, I got kind of quiet there. I was just thinking. <laughs> this is the part where I get a little quiet because I'm starting to think about how I want this card to finish. I'm not sure. Hmm, maybe I will use this little. I just kind of tucked in behind. Or maybe. All right. I'm going to hold off. I still might use him. But I am going to glue these guys down because I know that they're where I want them. Okay. So let's just put a little of glue on the stem here. Maybe. I've not used my liquid glue in a while, so we were good. Now it's coming out. Just need a little shimmy shake. I like that eucalyptus there. I probably will end up putting a couple little foam dots behind these elements so that they stay popped up. But I might do that after I end the live just to save time. I like that. Perfect. Okay. Get a little bit more liquid glue in here. Yeah, Susan, I've never, I don't, um, I don't really pre-plan pre the card design. I kind of figure out the products I want to use together and I have an idea, but I don't ever, I never do full card beforehand. Um, I just kind of, I guess I wing it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it works out great and sometimes it doesn't work out perfect. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna do just a double bit here. Yes, we are gonna do a mini hot foil event uh, coming soon. I don't know how much information uh, Henry has mentioned there. So I'll just keep it at that. So look forward to our little mini one or mini one day oil event. We coming, details will be coming very soon. Oops. Hey, hey, hey. And they have a little bit of glue on my fingers. Okay, so there's that. I wanna see if I wanna try to tuck this in anywhere. Ooh, I kinda like it right there. 
actually Just give it a little, little love. Oh, yep. Let me also talk about that while I finish up my card here. If you are interested in joining us for our scrapbooking event in May, today is the very final day for registration. So um, we would love for you to join us. It is scrapbooking. It is based on scrapbooking. There's a bunch of new scrapbooking product that's included in the event kit. So if you want to try your hand at some scrapbooking or even maybe draw inspiration for using the products with the card, we would absolutely love for you guys to join us. You can register over on our website. Today is the final day. And I think I just made my sentiment crooked while I was talking, talking and fussing. Okay, there we go. All right. Got just a little bit left to do. We're going to add a few jewels and then we're going to call this card complete. Yeah, Ruth, I do, Ruth. I get sticky fingers all the time. All right. And so we are going to do some of our lighter shades of glitter drops on this card. We are going to do blush. And we are going to do a leaf. And we are going to do champagne. And I think that these really matched. Whoa. Got a little wily with the champagne there. I think that these three colors really match the ink colors that I, um, oops, the ink colors that I picked really super well. All right, so like I mentioned, we are going to use the, the edger piece, or excuse me, the wax, the wax tip on this one. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do here is we are gonna do a little row, a little trio on one of the arches. I may change which arch here in a minute, but let's see. And I think we're gonna do, a, we'll start and end with blush. That is really pretty. And then I think we're gonna do the same thing down here, but just in a little bit smaller. Blush, leaf, champagne, and then one more blush. And I don't normally do four. I normally do uneven amounts with uh, with uh, with three, but I'm actually really liking just the four. But I think I'm going to move this up one section here into a little bit bigger area. Yep, I like that a little bit better right there. <laughs> I haven't been able to use blush glitter drops for a while because I feel like they've been out of stock. <laughs> um, so I'm actually really thrilled that I saw them and they were in there today. Okay, I think that is what I'm going to do today for my jewels. So let's go ahead and put, what is this blush? Put these away before I knock them all over my desk and then we'll get them glued down and we will be done with this with today's card. Well, thank you guys. Glad you're enjoying my card, my card today. I appreciate that. I do love the, I do love the brass trays, friends. So let's go ahead and get these glued down up here. A little bit of glue for each one. And after the live is over, I may end up putting a few more jewels on the flowers. I'm just not for sure yet. So we'll stick with these little rows of jewels to start with. And then just look for the picture in the future to see if I opted to add any more. I'm not sure that I will. Oh, stop moving on me but I'm gonna have a little bit more time to think about that. So I will look at that a little bit closer. These guys moved on me, I must have, must have shifted them. We're just gonna do same thing, center them on 
one of those stripes, one of those stripes in the back, arch back up, straighten it out here. There we go. Ooh, stop that. Being a little there, being a little wily. And there we have my really very pastel congratulations card, which like I mentioned, I think would be really perfect for, you know, engagements or weddings, maybe even a baby card. You could even uh, do the leaves in like a pale blue and it would be really lovely for a baby card as well. All right, friends. Well, that is my card today. Thanks so much for joining me. Just doing a little desk cleanup here. And then I will get this camera flipped around and we will look, wait for the winner of today's gift card code. And we will let you go. Give me just a second while I get my camera switched around here. Here we go. All right, so Kinnery is gonna pick a winner here momentarily. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching my soft little with love card together. This looks terrible in this angle. <laughs> All right, and it looks like we have a winner. Congratulations to Christine Manfeld. You have won today's $15 gift card code. Um, all you have to do to uh, claim your prize is email me. My email is leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. There's no H on the end of my name. So it's just L-E-A at pinkfreshstudio.com. So email me to claim that and then give me about two to three business days to get back to you with that code. Okay, so we will. We are resuming scrapbooking live this week on Thursday. I believe it's Natalie. Um, so that is Thursday. 12 noon central time here on YouTube. So basically same time, same place, different here on Thursday. Uh, so that will be our next um, live, scrapbooking live. Be sure to join us. There's lots of great inspiration with scrapbook layouts as well, even if you're a card maker. And of course we give away a $15 gift card code in that live as well. So definitely worth it. Congratulations to Christine. And um, for everyone watching on replay, I hope you enjoyed. And to everyone, have a great rest of your day. Uh, we'll see you next week, or we'll see you on Thursday. <laughs> Bye.